What's up guys, you know what time it is. It's Friday, we're back with another What The Fitness. All right, in this week's What The Fitness, we oh, you know what that sound means. It's email time, bitches. It's mail, motherfuckers. Mail, motherfucker. Ho, ho, ho is our emailer in. Okay, so ho, this ho, comes ho, ho. to us from Simon Verkainer. I am not repeating that. <laughs> From Seaman. Wouldn't you hate to be a teacher in school? You know, when you have to like pronounce the people's names and you're just like, ah. Okay. So the title of the video is, ready for it? Yep. Why calories are a con. Oh God, this can be so triggering for me. It's only Please. three minutes and 12 seconds. Thank God. <laughs> The Economist. Oh, Jesus. For decades, people who want to control their weight have been told to count calories. Given that the great... So this is already setting up the straw man fallacy that energy balance is just counting calories. That calories in, calories out means counting calories. One is referring to the first law of thermodynamics, whereby energy cannot be created or destroyed. It is just a property of the universe. The other is a methodology of tracking your food intake. Quite different. Majority of diets fail. Is this good advice? Could the calorie be one of the biggest delusions in dietary history? Well, I've seen this article before. The idea of counting ripped. calories was introduced by Wilbur Atwater. He believed that a calorie is a calorie. His theory was that a calorie provided the body with an equal amount of energy, no matter... That's also a straw man. Um, I don't know if Atwater actually believed that, but... So a calorie is a calorie because calorie just refers to the amount of energy something contains. What is different is sources of calories can have differential impacts on your level of energy expenditure. So all sources of calories may not be the same, but all calories are the same. What kind of food or micronutrient it came from? He concluded that one gram of either protein or carbohydrate provided four calories of energy, compared with nine from one gram of fat. This girl's voice is so annoying. And more than a century later, that series of numbers if you have a really dumb video that you want to get people to believe, just have somebody with an English accent read it, and then everybody's like, oh, seems legit! To calculate the energy that we get from foods. But what Atwater didn't factor in at the time was that different people burn different foods at different rates, depending on their genetic makeup, or variables such as the type of bacteria in an individual's gut. And cooking food really so that's never actually been substantially supported by data although there there is evidence that based on your gut microflora that you may extract different amounts of calories from uh, dietary fiber that being said <laughs> it's not like one person oh they extract a hundred percent of the calories out of their food whereas the other person they only get half these differences between individuals are pretty small. Are there differences? Yes, it's likely there are differences, but they are small differences. What is much more variable from person to person is actually the amount of energy they expend, and much of that is controlled by your non-exercise uh, activity thermogenesis, which is things like what I'm doing right now, which moving my hands, twitching, fiddling uh, chinos, like touching his face and moving from side to side. All that actually accounts for up to around 500 calories per day of energy expenditure. People who are very, very lean and obesity resistant tend to simply increase their non-exercise activity thermogenesis when they overconsume food. Thus, they are resistant to weight gain because as they increase their energy intake, they increase their energy expenditure. People who are more prone to obesity and obesogenic 
tend to keep the same level of activity and the same level of daily energy expenditure even in response to increasing food intake. Now they do increase some because as their body mass goes up, their basal metabolic rate goes up, but they don't have nearly the same robust increase in NEAT as lean people do. Increase the amount of calories a person can absorb from it. Atwater's findings led to the misconception that fat always leads to more weight gain than other foods, including sugar. Okay, this so that's, theory, that's another uh, fallacy right there. Fat always leads to more weight gain than sugar. So they're setting up the idea that we've been told that sugar or that fat causes us to gain more weight than sugar. Can any, is there any kind of like extra information there? Like, are we talking about the same total calorie level? Because yeah, if you equate, if you have a uh, hundred grams of sugar and a hundred grams of fat with twice the calories, yes, you will gain more fat from that fat. But if we're talking about the same amount of calories from each, 500 calories from sugar versus 500 calories from fat, no, you're not gonna gain more fat from fat. But again, they're being intentionally vague with this so that they think they can't get called on it. Has shaped dietary policy in the West for decades. Again, they talk about calorie fact, counting as the same thing as calories in, calories in, out. It's not. Then insulin stacks it straight into fatty tissue, <laughs> making eating sugar the fastest way to create body fat. The fault is not entirely at waters. So this is a very biochemical view of things, and this is what happens when biochemists who get focused on one pathway and fail to see overall physiology. So if you have a high carbohydrate diet, you have higher levels of insulin. If you have a low carbohydrate diet, you have lower levels of insulin. Insulin does indeed drive fat into fat cells. However, <laughs> dietary carbohydrate is not stored as fat for the most part. In fact, a study showed that around 98.5% of the fatty acids that are stored in fat tissue come from dietary fat. If you eat a high fat diet, yes, you will burn more fat, you will oxidize more fat because your insulin levels are lower. However, <laughs> fat loss is not the same thing as fat oxidation. Fat balance, which is whether or not you gain or lose fat, is determined by the amount of fat you store minus the amount of fat that you oxidize or burn. If you eat a high fat diet, let's take two diets, isocaloric, meaning equal in calories, equal in protein. One's high fat, low carb, one's low fat, high carb. On the high carb diet, you will have higher levels of insulin. You will have much lower rates of fat burning. You'll also store way less fat because you have so little dietary fat. On a low carb, high fat diet, you will burn more fat. You will also store more fat because you have more fat. The overall net deposition or loss of fat will be determined by your overall energy balance, which is how many calories you have consumed versus how many you are expending. And we have to date over 32, sorry, 33 studies where they equate calories and protein and vary the amount of carbohydrate and fat. And the overall consensus of those studies is that you lose the same amount of fat. And as far as sugar being more being the, the fastest way to gain fat. There was a study done in 2001 that was highly controlled where they took a group of people that were eating either a high sugar diet or a low sugar diet, but they ate the same amount of protein, carbs, and fats. So the high sugar diet, higher insulin levels should cause, uh, well, both groups were in a calorie deficit. Now, according to this theory, this theory is based on the carbohydrate insulin model obesity. These people, even in the calorie deficit, should have been storing fat because it's not calories that matter, it's, it's sugar, remember? Uh, and we'd certainly expect the people eating the low sugar diet to have way more body fat loss uh, than people eating the high sugar diet. So one group was eating t less than 10, or about 10 grams of sugar a day. Another group was eating over 100 grams of sugar a day. They lost almost the exact same amount of fat. This, you cannot reconcile this with this theory of obesity. It does not work. Not only that, but all the other studies looking at where sugar is high or low, but calories and protein are equated, none of them have shown more fat gain or less fat loss when calories are equated between high sugar and low sugar.
In 1967, the sugar industry secretly funded. Oh, so now that all their argument, so all their arguments already been fucking destroyed. So now they bring in the conspiracy theory of big sugar funded this, and uh, you realize that this is the exact same argument that vegans make as to why animal products are fattening because the animal companies funded so much. So big sugar and big animal kind of exist in, in, in opposition in terms of lobbying. This is just another example of a diet tribe spitting out whatever they can to try and make it seem like there's some shadowy force trying to make you fat. In obesity levels at fat rather than sugar. This led the US Senate and many other governments to recommend a low fat, low cholesterol diet. Oh, I can't diet. wait to destroy this one. That advice coincided with the most dramatic rise in obesity in human history. Okay, so they show this graph and they show it from 1960 to 2006. Do you know why they stopped at 2006 when showing obesity trends versus sugar? Because since the year 2000, sugar consumption has gone down while obesity continued to increase at the same rate. You know what has continuously gone up since 1960? Calorie intake. <laughs> so in the last about 15 years, sugar intake has gone down. You know what's gone up? Added fats to the diet while calories have continued to go up. Again, you cannot reconcile the carbohydrate insulin model of obesity with the data that's present. Contributing to a rapid rise in cardiovascular diseases which have become the leading cause of death worldwide. Atwater's assumptions have become so deeply entrenched in society that many deem an overhaul of the system too disruptive and expensive. But more than a century on... Or they just don't agree with the carbohydrate and some novel obesity. Measure. So, uh, one final thing I'll mention. Um, if insulin was in fact the number one driving force for the obesity epidemic, which this video is, is, is implying. We would expect people who uh, are given a drug that increases insulin to become more fat. There is a drug currently called liraglutide. It is a GLP-1 mimetic. It significantly increases insulin levels. Another side effect of that drug is it significantly cuts people's body fat. I believe the most recent study showed a 17% reduction in body weight and fat amongst people who took liraglutide, even though their insulin levels were higher. Once again, if insulin and not calories are the primary driving factor behind obesity, then something that increases insulin independent of diet should cause increased body fat gain. But instead, this drug caused body fat loss why? Because it increased energy expenditure, which is part of the energy balance equation. CIM zealots, you can get fucked. Go look at the data. You don't know what you're talking about. Eat dicks.